Hello everyone and welcome in. We're here for the third and final round of the 2023 Open at Tallahassee. Tom Brown Disc Golf Course is where we're at. And this guy, Matty Orem, still your leader. He's at 17 under. Braden Sides had a great second round. Silas Schultz also jumping up onto the lead card and rounding us out is Dylan Sepila. We're here. Beautiful Sunday afternoon as we're trying to wrap up this PDGA A tier taking place down in Tallahassee. Hole one, 355 feet. You have OB on both the left and right side, and we've also seen quite a few of them slip just deep of the basket. Play slightly downhill, and of course you have the hard pan to deal with on this left side, so plenty of danger here to get things started, but otherwise it feels like a hole you should be getting for birdie to get started. Thus far, we've seen Orem struggle here. He's yet to pick up the birdie on one in rounds one or two. And some significant win has picked up, but Orem inside the circle. Here's Braden Sides. And by the time you're watching this, Braden is celebrating his 21st birthday. And setting himself up for a birdie on hole one. This championship Sunday is his last day of being 20. So happy birthday to you, Braden. Good looking forehand there by Silas. And Dylan Seppala rounds out our lead card and... A little too much turn on that one. He's going to throw it right into the ground. So although the winds have been mostly in check throughout the weekend, we're definitely seeing some of the strongest gusts right now. And not exactly a good way to get started. And Dylan off the front just thinking, man, I hope the whole round isn't like this. Light headwind for Orem. No problem. So he finally picks it up. We've been talking about how slow his starts were in both rounds one and two. He went par, par, and par on the first three holes. And now starting off with a birdie here on Championship Sunday. Maybe overcompensating for a wind lift there. Silas is going to tap in for the par. And with that, Braden will remain just three back of Orem. presenting sponsor of the weekend is visit Tallahassee and you've seen all the golf we were here for a silver series event last year I know they're working on big things for the disc golf pro tour in future years so needless to say visit Tallahassee is well as a saying and as well as something you should actually be doing as we're here on hole two just 335 feet Orm finally seems to have the line. A little skip will help. That is inside the bullseye. High left tree kick. Doesn't kick too bad into the rough on that left side, so he'll still have a look for birdie, but it's going to be a long one. Hole two playing on the easier side. Fourth, in fact, the fourth easiest hole on the course. The 
See how Dylan can bounce back after the rough double bogey start. And that's about as good as you could ask for. Great recovery. And the good bid and online for Braden, but he's going to be short. Braden, Aiden, I don't know. They've all got different spellings. But in all seriousness, I apologize to Aiden, who we saw on the card yesterday as Silas picks up the birdie. Dylan's going to do the same. I had misspelled Aiden's name with an E instead of two A's. So I did apologize to him in person already. But I'd like to do so here on the coverage. I can own up to that mistake all day. Not too bad. Three birdies and the par, and we'll head over to the easiest hole on the course. And it's also the shortest, 245 feet for hole number three, average 2.6. Not too much to this. It plays slightly uphill. This is the field goal that you must navigate through. Well, you don't have to, but that is kind of the preferred route and the route of least resistance anyway. And we haven't seen too much success. I believe... In eight attempts in round one and two, we've seen zero birdies so far, and that looks very similar to what we've seen in the past. So Orem will have a putt, but obstructed, as most of them are. Ooh, and that fights through. That's going to be the closest shot we've seen so far in... Now 10 tries. Dylan officially erased the double bogey with a birdie here. Uh, if so, he's going to have work to do. Brayden comes into the event with the lowest rating on this card. At 9.93, as he hails out of North Augusta, South Carolina. Dylan, 10.14 rating, also out of South Carolina. <laughs> so the shortest hole on the course for the guy that's leading the tournament Manages to be shut out. He gets no birdies here on hole number three for the weekend. Silas, however, picks one up. And after going all the way through the tunnel and deep, we see that Braden has the comebacker. That's going to be frustrating having one of the rare open looks at this basket. So Orem is also in for the par. So we just see one birdie here on hole number three. One out of 12. Not necessarily backing up the easiest stat on the course, but... We'll blame me. We'll blame the camera. That's what it is. As we head over to hole four, 465 feet, 142 meters, you have the water carry. You just need to get over this. As you can see, there's a white painted line, and then everything beyond this is safe, unless you find the road on the right side, and then a few guardian trees here completely surrounding the basket. And you love the angle here. Just enough time to flex back. It's a little tickle off the branches. And Silas deep of the pin here on a 465-foot shot. We saw the park job by Orem here yesterday. Okay, fine, as he says. That'll work. Get a park job yesterday, and then round one, we saw the massive throw in. Might be the longest putt on the weekend thus far. Oh, 
Now he's neighbors with Orem over there. And if you come out to this park on any given weekend, you may see that it plays a little bit different. That's thanks to Dave Muntean along with the entire Tallahassee Park and Rec Department. I know this course has undergone a redesign about six or so years ago. And then they also are accounting for a championship level layout. Now here's Orem from deep in the rough. Oh, and bangs it in. Matt Orem goes three for three on the 465 foot hole number four this weekend. And less obstructed, Dylan doesn't get that one to drop. And with the work that this crew is doing out here, again, visit Tallahassee, along with the club and all the sponsors, I think we're going to see some big news coming for 2024. Kind of hard to hold these guys back. Oh, and that one just barely trickles in. We're going to have a special new segment. Checking in with our double G jerky snack time friends. We'll do that in just a moment. We're going to see some cleanup here first on hole four. Let's check in with Silas along with Orm and the rest of the crew for our double G jerky snack time check-in. It's not the best pet ever. But yeah, it's good enough. You, uh, give us an assessment since we're not hearing you on the mic at the moment. Well, Micah, I made the putt. I walked back to my caddy. Panda Micah right here. Look. ADD champion. Sir, both of us. I literally know. just thousand rated caddy. He was like, you gotta commit. And I was like, I pretty much did. <laughs> just just about the like the least you possibly could. So we love to see those fall though. So talk about the pro tip of do you have your own pin on your own bag? Mm hmm Yeah, let's see. Right here. It's my face. It's huge. It's quality. You can pick them up at teamfiggins.com if you want to support me. I also have Ben Calloway. He gave me that right off of his bag. We traded for a pin in Team Figgins, which this one glows in the dark, so that's pretty hype. And then Chad Sherbert with the uh, little Sherbert, and also he gave me this disc. So if you see me throw this one, his name is Chad. It's an, oh. M it's an MD3, and his name's Chad. And I, I really want to start naming my discs. You name yeah. your discs. Yeah. yeah, I got half of them named. If they're like, got character to them, I definitely name them. But I think it's cool just being like, you know, hey Julio, or yeah. my uh, Evader Holyfield. Yeah. You know, I like that one. Do you have a favorite? Uh, let me think, man. Give me a second. All right. <laughs> I think it's important that you start a relationship with your discs. You're very close with them. So having a name feels right, but also just coming up with one. I don't know, that's hard for me. I was like trying to think of some. And they just have to stick, you know? They can't all be legendary like Zoe's. Dr. Dre does. Exactly, exactly. But Chad, I love it. I love Chad. Last week after Texas in the hot tub, washed them away. Oh, the hot tub. Not yeah. holy water, just the hot tub. I mean, that's, that's pretty holy, dude. <laughs> you know. Depends what you're doing. There's a lot of holy, you know, circulation, <laughs> hot water, see all them germs. <laughs> yes, that's what happens when you're heading on the long walk from four to five, folks. Hope you enjoyed that. As we're heading over to five, one of Silas's favorite holes. And as we said, we're missing him on the mic, but this is a downhill. You got to keep the nose down, get it to bend from left to right, and then hopefully hooking up at the very end if you're throwing a righty backhand drive. And that's hung up on the right side. Pitching out might be in play from that right side. We still ain't made a field goal all year, baby. <laughs> Not quite able to split the final uprights, but we're going to find Orem 
on the dance floor looking at a birdie. And after the kick, that's going to push him left side. We'll see if he has room to recover from over there. The left side is a little more sparse. So I feel like your opportunities for recovery are better. Oh, and that one filters out nicely. Silas would have loved that kind of kick out. And after lots of <laughs> contemplation, we see that Silas goes with the forehand roller and just to the other side of the fairway. So par doesn't seem to be an option. Meanwhile, Braden, nice easy layup. Dylan with a little work left to do just to save the par. Quite manageable, though. Yeah, not really sure that's how that works, Silas. Wow, nice. So again, <laughs> Orem struggled so much on holes one and two and three throughout the weekend, but then comes up to holes four and five and picks up the birdies more often than not. So very impressive. Dylan squanders away the look at par there and off to a very rough start. We see a little mixture of everything here on five. Birdie, par, and two bogeys. Played as the seventh most difficult hole. Averaged .24 above par. Now we head over to hole number six. Hole six, plenty of challenges that plays basically the opposite direction that we just saw on hole number five, but very much a tunnel shot. This one bends instead of down and to the left, it goes up and to the right. And plenty of trouble, especially if you hit early. Or you could throw a near perfect shot like that. Six, the second most difficult hole on the course. Averaged a half stroke over par today. Wow, and that misses everything. solid wood and I feel like anytime you hit almost any of these earlier trees that almost guarantees you a par at best it just kind of takes you out of position to be able to get all the way up onto the green unless you make maybe a long putt from just short of the OB area let's stand still I'm at this point I'm concerned about his follow-through I've I've watched him now take a few practice swings i'd love to see him give himself the extra three and a half or four inches to the left of his mini he does have that room and he's not taking quite full advantage of it it throws an excellent shot and that's exactly all you can ask for and now he's got a long look for birdie from there and he did say to me immediately after the fact he was worried about racking his hand on the side of that tree there Just prime position here. And it should result in a birdie. Thank you. Just textbook for what you're trying to do on this hole. Matty O has one tree to contend with. Wow. 
Also easy tap in range for him. Now look at the shot here by Dylan. Clear of everything, able to give it a little bit of a run, possibly dump one in for a long eagle. Instead checks up right next to the basket. Dangerous here, because if, you, if you're too aggressive, you're going to bring these tree branches and limbs into play. And he keeps it low enough, but at best settling for the par. Pretty impressive what we're seeing here from the lead card. I feel like our lead card or our feature card in the first two days have performed very well on six. We keep talking about it being one of the most difficult holes on the course, and yet our players have gone through relatively unscathed. In fact, I'd bet a stack of Frisbees on it that you're not going to find a better group that played this less in less strokes than what we just saw. We saw three birdies and a par for a hole that averaged a half a stroke above par. We head to hole seven, 950 feet, playing down to the bottom of the base here. If you really want to push it, you can all the way down to that OB line, and then you're going to throw over, and then ultimately hang a left, come in through one of these tunnels or these gaps, and hopefully walk away with a birdie. One of the easier holes on the course relative to par. Again, it's a par five. No problems for the tee shot by Orem. We've seen most of the drives really challenge that right side. Braden, no different. And he gets it to check up in the center. Most have finished hard left close to the OB line, but that checks up in the center. He's still looking for the center on the second shot. That also just scooting inside of those branches. And, yeah, the only guy to go with a forehand in three rounds on our coverage. Okay. I think with that, I can officially rebrand him. He is no longer Silas Schultz. I think I'm going to go to Stylish Schultz. Yeah, that's going to be the play. Oh, this isn't, though. This is terrible. What are you doing? <laughs> you hear him say so bad. That's all we talked about in the first two rounds of coverage is the only place you cannot go is off to that left side. Way out here to the right or in the center. Perfect positioning. Good place to be. Gives you plenty of options to the green, but you cannot be short left. That's exactly where Schultz threw it. Perfect drive. And if somehow you're new here, the emblem there in the middle of the fairway is, is not a Prodigy logo. That is the city of Tallahassee's logo. And so, of course, you could... See some similarities in disc golf. Massively supported here in Tallahassee. But that is a City of Tallahassee logo, not a Prodigy logo. Nice approach. Yeah, this is the short left side. He thought about pitching out back into the fairway. And here he's just going to try and fight through, and he's going to get to the edge, which very fortunate to do so. He'll have a long look at possibly even still a birdie. Comes in hot for Dylan, but still look for birdie. Orem's third. Just 
Just a couple of those guardian trees are what are preventing you from easy access to the green and not a mistake I would expect to see though out of Orem. Especially with how well he's been playing all weekend. This is Orem for birdie. He didn't get this in round one, did get it in round number two. What he also hasn't gotten in either round is a bogey. So very impressive for Orem. So far, two and a half rounds in almost, and hasn't carded an over par stroke. Braden. Short birdie look. I got to say, that was a weird reaction. I I don't know what happened there. I don't know how that happened, is maybe what I would say. Looked good. Good speed. Good pace. Good height. Good angle. I... That's got to be frustrating. So very disappointing to see so many pars. In fact, all four competitors here on the lead card walking away from the par five. All with fives. It's number one. Worst spit out of the weekend. Number one right there. I don't know if he's keeping a tally or what but there it is again in slow motion I don't know we still got a few holes to play let's hope nothing tops that we head over to hole number 8 if you threw a good shot back on hole number 5 hopefully you can throw a pretty similar shot on 8 you're trying to get out into this opening that should set you up probably for a forehand approach up to the right side trying to clear this little gully and hopefully you can walk away with the par, maybe even a bonus birdie. Eight playing on the tougher side. Also averaging a quarter of a stroke over par, but a great shot by Orem. Also, great shot there by Braden. And that ultimately kicks down, lands over there by the bridge. And one of our gracious volunteers gives the green flag. Sounds like a good time for a plug for all those amazing volunteers, supporters, sponsors. Thank you guys so much, Tallahassee Disc Golf Association. Laced drive there by Silas a moment ago. And an awkward stance there for Dylan, but making do with it. Well, you heard him call out his own name. I wouldn't say that's from the book of Matthew, that's for sure. Orem, off the mark after setting himself up on a beautiful tee shot. And we're going to see a pretty similar spot here. Oh, and then it catches edge and rolls down into the gully. So that'll be an obstructed look coming up there for Stylish. If he dated a famous musician, would it have to be Billie Eilish? Does that only make sense? Billie Stylish? Stylish? I don't know. <laughs> He's not here to challenge me, so I get to say whatever I want. Oh, and the struggles continue here for Dylan. So Orem looking to get up and down. Literally. Uh, 
Oh, first he's got to get up, and a little frustration there out of Orem, our leader. Sitting on a sizable lead, but doesn't like to give up any strokes. Oh, and around the back side, right side corner pocket, all the way around. You know, take a trip around the world here. It's a full 360 to go run that one down. We're going to take another look at it coming in from the other angle. Yeah. <laughs> Just enough. Blind shot for Stylus Schultz. And we said it yesterday. You throw a drive like he did and then not ultimately walk away with the birdie. Just feels like a, a punch to the stomach. So nice work. Braden, pretty similar look. Orem doesn't get it to drop. And for the first time this weekend, actually, he's going to give one back to the course and to his card mates. Orem falls back to 21 under. And Dylan is going to walk away with the bogey as well. Head on over to the shop.thediscgolfguy.com, pick up some goodies. Of course, I've got Double G Jerky and a number of other custom stamp discs along with some stock products. Any of that support goes a long way to helping out the channel. We appreciate it. Hole 9, a little downhill, 295, plays from left to right. We've seen ground play, we've seen forehands, we've seen backhands, we've seen a little bit of everything here. Not a lot of birdies, though. The putter backhand flashing just past the basket. Great shot there by Schultz. And if I were to give a pro tip, as we're seeing a pretty solid-looking forehand, just do what Stylish here has done. Jumps in on commentary for a couple of rounds, and then just basically... Works himself right up onto the lead card for final day. The problem is he doesn't stick around to then give us commentary on the final night. So that's the one adjustment you need to make. Dylan's up and ready to go right away. <laughs> it's just not going his way. That looked like it could have easily skipped down right next to the pin. And instead catches a tree. And he still cans the putt. Nice work. And speaking of the work, big shout out to Michael over at Disc Golf Van Life. He's been helping out on the cameras, drone action. Make sure you go out to his channel, subscribe. Also find him on Instagram. All the links are in the description. Maddie O on tilt. No problem for Schultz. Big putt. So that's what I need you guys to do. If, if I haven't already prompted you for something else, Sally, tell me what your plan is. For your next tournament to find that lead card, what do you need to do? What's the pro tip, the hump, the trick, the roadblock that you've had? Whatever it is, tell me in the comments what it is that's been holding you back from that lead card and what you're going to do to fix it for your next tournament.
you too could be featured here in Tallahassee. Just like Stylus Schultz. He's trying to hunt down Matty O. And that's everything for the front nine, folks. Thank you for joining. Like, share, subscribe. Do all the YouTube things. Consider becoming a Patreon member as we're watching everybody trying to make a little bit of a charge here. We got the exciting conclusion on the other side. We'll see you guys for the back nine.